We do have inflation. It's running 4.5% now. We think it's going to go up close to 5. The big fear was deflation. Can you think of some really powerful institutions in Ottawa? Of course, there's the Prime Minister's office. Uh, the Prime Minister can make appointments to all kinds of positions. Of course, the House of Commons and Senate together form Parliament. And that institution writes laws that affect almost every single aspect of our lives. But there's one institution that I'll bet you didn't think of that actually controls a lot of your day-to-day -day life because it controls the money. I want to talk to you again about the Bank of Canada. The Bank of Canada has an incredible amount of power. It literally controls the value of the money that you work so hard to earn. And its policies determine the interest rates that you pay on all the debt that you carry from your mortgage to your car loan to your line of credit. The interest payments you pay to the bank are ultimately determined by the policies at the Bank of Canada. Now that's an incredible amount of power. When you think about people working hard for their paycheck or having money saved aside, and then the Bank of Canada can devalue that savings or, or devalue the money that was earned for the work that was given. We're talking about an incredible amount of power. And because of that, the bank should be subject to ruthless scrutiny and dispassionate analysis. We as Canadians should demand that we know absolutely everything that goes on at the Bank of Canada because it has such a big impact on our lives. With great power comes great responsibility. But unfortunately, it doesn't always come with accountability. You see, it seems like in Canada, the government subsidized media have made a decision to just take the Bank of Canada and its officials at their word. Consider just recently when the bank took to Twitter and published a series of tweets denying the link between the bank's printing of money, Trudeau's deficits, and the current inflation crisis that we're all suffering through. Essentially, the bank claimed that it did not flood the Canadian economy with billions of dollars of brand new currency to underwrite Trudeau's record-breaking deficits. So the bank is saying that it didn't create all that brand new currency, but yet there is billions of dollars of new money in the Canadian economy. It's saying it didn't underwrite Trudeau's deficits by purchasing all those government bonds? Well then, simple question for the bank. If they didn't do it, who did? It turns out they actually did. And on a massive scale. You see, as Trudeau started borrowing more and more money, the bank decided to buy those government bonds. Government bonds are basically an IOU. When the government wants to spend money that it doesn't have, it has to borrow that money. So it writes a promise to pay the money back plus interest. Now those bonds are backed up by the credibility of the Canadian government, which is ultimately backstopped by the Canadian taxpayer. So in spring of 2020, when Justin Trudeau was spending all kinds of money that he didn't have, he started issuing a record amount of those government bonds and the Bank of Canada decided to start buying them. Now the bank's decision to purchase those bonds helped underwrite the government operations. Now they got their entire creative team together and they decided to call the program to purchase Government of Canada bonds, the Government of Canada Bond Purchase Program. In fact, the bank stated in April of 2020 on its own press release that it was purchasing these bonds to, quote, maintain proper functioning of the government bond market. Well, who's the primary beneficiary of a properly functioning government bond market? Well, obviously, the government. Starting in the spring of 2020, the Bank of Canada started buying those government bonds to the tune of $5 billion every week just as Trudeau's deficits were soaring. Now, when individuals or large financial institutions purchase government bonds, they use their own money to do it. But the Bank of Canada did something a little bit different. It bought those government bonds with brand new money that it created right out of thin air, and it credited that money into the settlement accounts of large financial institutions. Now, as the amount of government bonds that the Bank of Canada owned grew from $78 billion from March 2020 
to $435 billion at the end of 2021, which is, by the way, a more than 400% increase. While that was happening, the monetary base, the amount of money in the Canadian economy increased from $89 billion to $385 billion. That is a 330% increase in less than two years. As the Bank of Canada bought more and more government debt, the money supply, the amount of money in the Canadian economy went up right along with it. Now that's not my personal opinion. That's a fact. It's backed up by the bank's own charts on its own website, showing a dramatic increase in the amount of government bonds that it was holding, right along with a dramatic increase in the amount of money circulating in the Canadian economy. But hold on a second. Let's not forget the tweets that the Bank of Canada put out just recently. We literally have a situation where the Bank of Canada's own actions created new money. And now prices are going up because we all this new currency is washing around our system. And the Bank of Canada is saying that it wasn't them. I am waiting for a... I didn't do it. If the bank said something that wasn't true, if it was disingenuous with Canadians and denied the relationship between the bond purchasing program and the amount of new money circulating in the Canadian economy and the record inflation that we're all suffering through, that you would have heard something about it, that you would have seen a newspaper article or watched a television clip denouncing the Bank of Canada's misinformation. You'd think this, but you'd be wrong. Instead of holding the Bank of Canada accountable for its obvious misrepresentation of its own actions, the government subsidized media in Canada dutifully reported the bank's version of events without any kind of fact checking or opposing view. There are many economists and elected representatives who have called out the Bank of Canada's policies and pointed out the connection between the money creation, the bond purchasing, and the inflation crisis we were experiencing. But none of those voices were included in the articles that covered the bank's tweet thread. So we have a situation where the state subsidized media is uncritically carrying the message of the state banker in defending the actions of the state. Where's the accountability? Does the legacy media in Canada believe that the officials at the Bank of Canada are, somehow exist on a higher plane? That there's some kind of oracles to the gods that whatever they say is true and can never be challenged? They're not perfect at the Bank of Canada. They're human beings. They make mistakes. They get things wrong. They should be held accountable when they do. That's the biggest frustration with the way the Canadian media handle powerful institutions like the Bank of Canada. At the same time that the Bank of Canada started its money creation and bond purchasing program, the officials at the Bank of Canada were predicting that Canada was going to head into a deflationary crisis. And when people like Pierre Polyev were raising the alarm, warning people that when you create money out of thin air, you will drive up prices, that inflation will inevitably follow a period of money creation. They were dismissed. He is spending money we don't have on what we do not need and printing it to pay for it. The result is higher prices for all Canadians. The Bank of Canada assured everyone, they, they swore up and down that inflation would never happen, that deflation was the thing that we should all be concerned about. In fact, in April of 2021, on April 27th to be specific, Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem said, and I quote, our biggest fear was deflation, which would have been very damaging. Credibility in any institution must be earned day in and day out. You don't create it by attacking those who ask tough questions. You can't bully someone into having faith in an institution by telling them to stop questioning anything. I'm going to keep calling out the Bank of Canada's mistakes and I'm going to call them out when they are dishonest with Canadians. They should not be allowed to hide behind fancy titles and technical jargon. They are too powerful an organization to escape public scrutiny. Now, I'm not afraid of tough questions. I'm pro accountability, so please, Leave a question or a comment below.
I sure won't attack you for doing so. And as always, thanks for watching.